Hi guys, Buildzoid here, and today we're going to be taking a look at this here HD7770 um, that I picked up some time ago because I have another HD7770 that's a Sapphire Vapor X card, and so that one's very nice and I don't want to break it and that kind of thing, but with that card what I noticed when trying to overclock it was that Basically, if you raise the core voltage, you start losing memory clock, and so I needed a sacrificial test subject, which is how this card ended up being called Test Subject Zero, um, where the solution is basically, so if raising core voltage causes memory, the, the, the memory overclocking to get less stable, then maybe there's some other voltage on the card that I can raise to fix the stability. Um, and it turns out there actually is, but the main concern with that is, is that, well, I have a tendency of breaking memory controllers far more than I have a tendency to break cores. Um, as in, actually, I think the first CPU I ever killed was a dead memory controller. And then I have multiple GPUs where I blew up the memory controller. And so really, I don't trust myself to not break memory controllers, so I didn't want to... Uh, do, you know, uh, a potentially memory controller breaking modification on a card that I want to keep in good condition. So that's how we ended up with this card here, and how it ended up uh, called uh, Test Subject Zero, because I did assume that, well, I, I honestly, there, there might there might be a Test Subject One event some, sometime down the line, but for now, Test Subject Zero is very much alive, and, and uh, there is a fix for the, the whole uh, scaling issues. So it's a power color HD 7770. The heatsink this thing comes with is trash. It is literally just this block of aluminum right here. So this fan is off of a reference, uh, off of a stock cooler for like AMD APUs. So this thing can go up to six and a half thousand RPM, especially because I've removed the actual thermistor on it. So this, uh, normally the way these fans work is there's a thermistor on them and that tries to basically sense the temperature of the heatsink badly because it doesn't actually make contact with the heatsink, but that doesn't matter, details, you know? But basically, if the heatsink gets rather hot, then the thermistor would get hot from the, the heat of the heatsink, and that would crank up the fan speed. Now, I bypassed the thermistor completely, so if you plug this into straight 12 volts, it just goes straight up to 6,500 RPM, which is not very pleasant to listen to, so I don't normally run it at that. Um, and it, honestly, like even even when testing this thing, I haven't run it at that. But that's that's why there's a six and a half thousand RPM label, like six and a half K label on there, so that I know not to just plug it into a straight twelve volt header because it gets very loud, very fast. Um, now the thing is, this fan actually throws so much airflow, even at reduced, uh, you know, even with like the PWM being used to to lower the fan speed or just feeding it less voltage that uh, basically the outer edges of this garbage aluminum heatsink uh, stay cold while the core is still hot. So that gives you a pretty good, like that, that's why you normally have heat pipes because at some point the biggest limit to your cooling performance is your ability to spread the heat through the heatsink. So yeah, th this doesn't obviously have heat pipes or anything like that. So uh, the, the car does run rather hot even though I do have a lot of airflow to throw at it. So, Anyway, um, let's take a look at the back of it. So here's all the modifications I've done. Initially, the plan was just to do a bunch of alt mods, which is, uh, which is what all these potentiometers are. Um, so this one's for core voltage, memory controller voltage, memory voltage, and uh, 0.95 volts rail. So that's the, um, well, that's probably like PCIe and display driver rail. Um, this one doesn't do anything. Um, you don't have to mod that one. Um, so that's why that mod is currently disconnected, which, uh, yeah, th th this just basically plugs in there. There's a little, like, connector I have that can hook up to the leg of the potentiometer. I have the same thing for the memory controller, except there it's the ground wire, whereas here it's the actual feedback line. Um, I just choose based on convenience which one's hooked up. Um, the memory controller, on the other hand, this actually does does improve the memory overclocking, so that's... That's great, it's just like, yeah, you can just raise the memory controller voltage. The main concern is, like, at some point, is it gonna kill the memory controller? So far, I've had this card all the way up to, like, 1.15 volts on the memory controller, and uh, the, the scaling is actually really not great. So normally the memory controller seems to run at, like, uh, 0.9 volts. And going from 0.9 to 1 volt, there's a big improvement in terms of memory overclocking. But going past that doesn't really seem to do anything, which is kind of unfortunate. Um, so, yeah, but I guess that means that, you know, um, well, 
less motivation to potentially break something because there are certain architectures out there where you can just keep raising the voltage and they keep scaling and then eventually you get to a voltage where it's like well it's not scaling very well anymore and then it's dead um out of absolutely nowhere no warning and you just suddenly have well it was scaling it was scaling and it's scaling and then it was dead um, so that's obviously really not fun to deal with. So it's much nicer where you have something like, yeah, if you if you whack another 400 millivolts into it, it might actually die, but there's also no good reason to whack 400 more millivolts into it, so you won't do that. Um, so, yeah, this, just bumping this up, um, you know, like, j like, just having the potentiometer connected already just makes such a massive improvement to the memory overclocking, which is why I ended up with the option to disconnect it, because initially I didn't think I'd need to, to, to test that, like, I thought it would scale some more, but no, it's just, just having a 10k, uh, I think it's a 10k ohm potentiometer, uh, hooked up to the feedback line, like, that alone, um, already, uh, raises the voltage so much that the memory overclocking, like, normally these cards, you're gonna have, like, a hard time doing 1600, but you just, like, just the potentiometer being hooked up, and it'll do 1700, and it'll do well over 1600 at elevated core voltages, which is the main issue with the other 7770, where it's just like, yeah, if you raise the core voltage, you get stuck at, like, 1300 megahertz memory, depending on just how high you raise the core voltage, so... Yeah, with this card, that's that's no longer an... Well, I'm not really running the core voltage that high, but, like, uh, it's, it's a lot better than the other 7770 I have, so... Um, yeah, so now there's a bit of a balancing act, because this doesn't completely fix the negative uh, memory scaling with core voltage, but it does delay it, so you can run higher core frequencies at higher memory frequencies. Um, so that that's kind of neat. Um, and yeah, it's just a shame that the cooling system is so bad, but that's not a problem on the VaporX card, because the VaporX card, well, the, the cool thing about the, the, the 7770 VaporX is, of course, it actually has a vapor chamber, which is completely ridiculous for such a low-end GPU to, to have a vapor chamber and heat pipes. Like, um, I think, well, does it? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it has heat pipes. So that, that thing is, like, ridiculously overbuilt for a card like this, but it's just a heatsink thing. Um, the power delivery is actually exactly the same on both cards, which is kind of neat because it means that you can just copy-paste your modifications from one card to the next card, so far more convenient in that sense. Um, anyway, other modifications I've done here. So, yeah, that's core voltage, memory controller, memory, uh, 0.95 volts rail, um... All of these are just feedback mods, so all of the controllers basically on this card are very easy to, to basically modify, um, which, which is what, what that means is, um, yeah, you just run a wire into a potentiometer and then that potentiometer to ground and you can uh, raise the voltage, well, yeah, raise the voltage. You could also potentially hook it up the modification such that you could lower the volt, actually, yeah, that you could lower the voltage, but that's not a function I wanted, so I only have it set up to, to raise vCore and raise all the different voltages. Um, so yeah, other than that, obviously I added some extra capacitors. This one over here is actually on the memory controller rail, and I added some uh, 0402 capacitors onto the memory controller right, like memory controller rail right behind the core. That unfortunately didn't do anything. I was kind of hoping, because the thing is, if something scales with just straight up voltage, then in theory it should also scale with extra capacitors, because uh, if you minimize the uh, undershoot on a transient, then you're effectively getting more voltage, um, and uh, without all the negative side effects of actually having a higher voltage. So, but the thing is, is obviously, like, on some rails it's just like they're already... Like, I, I'd assume that the, basically, the capacitors I'm using, they're too big, or they're, they're just not, like, I didn't add enough capacitance, uh, enough, like, the, the capacitors I'm using aren't low enough ESR and low enough ESL, or, well, like, you actually can't get a lower ESR, but I, the, ultimately, I didn't add enough uh, capacitors in parallel to make much of a difference, or, may, like, I was very strongly considering just straight up adding, because, um, I was very strongly considering adding capacitors straight to the actual substrate of the GPU core on this thing, but, uh, yeah, I couldn't do that because, uh, I only have 0402s, and those are way too, like, the smallest capacitor that I have in, like, a known quantity that I know what they are, uh, yeah, those are 0402s, and, uh, well, they're too tall. If I put a 0402... Uh, onto the substrate, the heatsink's not gonna, uh, not gonna make contact anymore, so, uh, yeah, um, can't do that, unfortunately. 
but uh, there is like there is three capacitors on the substrate which are very much just memory control or rail. And I was like, well, we could try add. Like, the closer you get the capacitance to the thing you're trying to, to to filter, the better. So I was really strongly considering putting them right on the substrate, and then it was just like I don't have the right size, so can't do that. Um, anyway, so the memory controller actually doesn't care about the extra capacitance I did add, which is kind of like. I mean, it's not really that surprising because the rail wasn't really that noisy in the first place. The highest peak to peak was like 90 millivolts. Um, so yeah, that, that wasn't much of a, like I wasn't expecting a huge improvement, but I, I was hoping for something. Um, on the V-Core, on the other hand, uh, I, I, well, you can see the hookup for the oscilloscope right there. So that was the, like I first did the memory controller, that didn't really do anything. Then I did the V-Core because the V-Core um, I never, like, I, I've not taken scope shots of a 7770 in the past, but this is the first one I've taken scope shots of, and my god, it was awful. Like, 290 millivolts, peak to peak, in Firestrike graphics test 1. And then in graphics test 2, the peak to peak was actually so high it was going out of range on the oscilloscope, and I didn't really feel like rescaling the, the, the volts per division. So ultimately it was like in excess of 330 millivolts peak to peak, which is disgusting. Like that is absolutely huge amounts of uh, like undershoot and overshoot. Um, so then I whacked on all these capacitors as well as tried to like upgrade the power plane. The, the power plane upgrade might have made a difference of like 10 millivolts, but the capacitors, those actually made a significant difference. Those took the card from, you know, 290 millivolts peak to peak in GT1 to 240. So I knocked off some 50 millivolts of overshoot and undershoot. Uh, obviously more overshoot came off than undershoot, but the undershoot did improve. Like the minimum voltages actually went up. So core overclocking did improve after the capacitor, uh, after the extra capacitors. And the capacitors that I added, these two big ones are 1500 microfarad, five milliohm ESR Nichicons, uh, FP series. So that's aluminum polymers. Then we have the three uh, smaller capacitors over here. Those are also Nichicon FP series, but these are five mil, uh, seven milliohm ESR, but a low ESL skew. So these are basically meant for, th these basically have a better frequency response than these um, is what's going on with those. And I also added five twenty two microfarad 0603 capacitors that are like multi-layer ceramics. And those are right, like you can't really see them, but they're they're down there, and then there's also the power bridge, which uh, probably made a difference of like 10 millivolts. But the thing is, I tested the power bridge after the cap mod, and the difference was just so small between the two that I was just like, yeah, that 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 doesn't really count. Um, so, yeah, um, that's that's kind of neat with the the 7770. Is just like, yeah, if you want better better memory over uh, better memory overclocking you just mod the VDDCI rail um, then core core the core scales with the core voltage just fine and that's kind of the cool thing about a lot of the small uh, AMD GPUs is you can whack so much core voltage into them and because they're not real like if your heatsink isn't garbage but they're not hard to cool so they'll actually just scale with up to like ridiculous amounts of core voltage so yeah these are are pretty fun to, to mess with. Um, ultimately, I'd say it's actually the 7770 is more difficult to work with than like a 77, uh, 7790 um, because the 7790 uses the Bonaire core, not the Cape Verde core. And the Cape Verde, so that that's this one, and that evidently has the whole issue of like, yeah, if you raise the core voltage too high for some reason, the memory controller gets upset unless you raise the memory controller voltage and then, then it's fine. But the Bonaire core doesn't care. You can just whack as much core voltage into that one as you want, and it just keeps going faster and faster and faster, and the memory is unaffected, which is really cool. Um, so those are those are kind of neat. Um, anyway, anything else? Uh, oh, I guess I can show you up close, like the the hookups for the mods, and also this card actually. Uh, I actually reflowed the core on this card because uh, it did the whole, you get into, well, you can't get into Windows if the drivers are installed, which normally indicates you either have uh, the solder bumps between the substrate and the die are bad, which you can't reflow those as far as I'm aware. Um, so that's a potential failure point where, like, you can thermal shock that back into working. But the thing is, uh, yeah, for whatever reason at the time, like, I, I, I didn't really want to get, like, uh, bother with this too much, so I just reflowed the card, just straight up went all the way up to reflow temperatures on the card, and I was just like, well, now it works, and so I don't know if it actually needed a reflow, or if it was just the thermal shock of the reflow that fixed the, 
fix the, the, the solder bumps between the substrate and the... Because the thing is, you have solder bumps connecting the substrate and the die, but the substrate connects to the PCB through uh, BGA. And a lot of people will, you know, talk, like, you'll see a lot of people do, like, BGA reflow for GPUs and uh, reballing GPUs and that kind of thing. But as a side effect of a reballing process, you're always going to thermal shock the die. So you're potentially fixing the solder bumps without actually trying to, and then just you get lucky and they come back into alignment. So anyway, but I did reflow this, though I'm not sure if that's going to be permanent. If but the thing is, it's it's like I don't really care too much about this card. Um, so um, yeah, because uh, like going forward. Um, I do plan to run it in Crossfire with my other 7770, but after I do that, what I really want to test is just how much voltage the memory controller can take. Because basically, if you can whack like 1.6 volts into the memory controller before it just up and randomly dies, then running the memory controller at say 1, 1 volt to 1.1 volt is probably safe. But if the memory controller up and dies at like 1.3 volts, then 1.1 uh, volts is probably not that great an idea, right? So that, that's kind of... Because I really want to avoid killing the other one. So I'll probably do a, like, max memory controller voltage test on this thing. Um, and then it's just going to become a parts card where I'm going to scrap it for, well, everything that that's... Uh, a anything I can find use for. So, you know, like MOSFETs, inductors, not capacitors, pulling through whole capac... Like, capacitors are so cheap. Like, you can get high-end through-hole capacitors for so very little. Um, so, yeah, but MOSFETs are kind of... Like, MOSFETs aren't hard... Like, MOSFETs aren't expensive so much as it's just, like, there's too many options. So it's like, if you're if you're choosing MOSFETs for specific... It's like, nah, just... I'm, I'm going to steal MOSFETs just because, like, yeah, I can. Um, and inductors is another case where it's just like, well, you know, I can just have them as spare parts. I don't know when I'll need one, but I might need one someday. So that's kind of that. Um, anyway, but that's probably a, a while away for, uh, <laughs> before I blow it up. Also, there's a chance I might just say, like, rescue the VRM, because the, the thing about this card is actually I have full documentation for, I think, every single voltage controller on this thing. So if I wanted just, like, a small three-phase uh, power board um, for, say, powering, I don't know, memory rails and that kind of thing, then this is actually a really convenient card to steal it from, because... Uh, well, you can just cut the card right around this area before the, the end of the, like, this part of the PCIe slot, because then you just feed 12 volts and 3.3 volts into this, uh, and you just need to fix the fact that you're going to, you know, cut this part off, and you can probably get the VRM to fire up quite easily. Um, it's one of the reasons why I really like the HD7870 reference PCB, is, uh, you, you can literally just cut the card like this, basically down this area, and you'll have a working VRM after you do that, which is really, really convenient. Unfortunately, the, the VRM is a five phase, and after you cut it, it ends up running in three phase mode. And the only way to fix that is to reprogram the controller, which there's no real proper documentation for. So not in public anyway. So, you know, that's that's annoying. But yeah. Oh, other than that, I guess I didn't mention this, but this is just for voltage readings. This is all like these voltage read points are actually connected incorrectly in the sense that they all measure way too high voltages. So like I'm measuring the memory voltage from over here. So it measures high. The point like this is literally soldered to the leg of the inductor for the for the 0.95 volts rail. So it also measures way too high. V core is the same thing, right? I'm me measuring V core from the inductor leg instead of from behind the actual core. So the core voltage reading is off by like 100 or 50 millivolts. The thing is, it doesn't really matter because I'm not using these to know exactly what voltage I'm at. It's more for me to know if I've raised the voltage by 50 mil. Like I want to see how much I've increased the voltage by. I don't actually care about the absolute value that much. Um, so that's that's why you know like that, that's the like it's easy to well actually soldering to inductor legs is generally not easy but this is a low power you know gpu so the the board doesn't soak up that much heat compared to say something like a like a 7970 soldering to the inductor legs is so so difficult but on something like this very very easy um so that's why um you know this this goes to an inductor leg this this goes to uh, there's a test point over there um which is what it goes to, but that's still, like, it, like, the memory controller on the GPU die is somewhere down here, and this is where my measurement point is, and so this measures, I think, 50, I think this measures, like, 80 millivolts too high, so 
also like this voltage reading isn't uh, isn't accurate. So yeah, that's that's the downside. If you're measuring from the actual VRM that's outputting the voltage, it's going to measure high compared to the uh, point like the the thing that's actually getting powered. So that's the downsides. And at this point, I think I'll just show you where where all the the hookup points for the mods are. So we're just going to zoom in. No, eh. actually. Yeah, we can zoom in this much. So, okay. So, if you have a 7770 using this PCB, which is, as far as I can tell, all of them, um, that's your feedback point hookup right there. Um, which, actually, that's really not that clear. But the thing is, so, you can actually get a data sheet for this chip right here quite easily. It's some ST micro thing that I don't remember what exactly the part number is, but you can get a full data sheet for the chip just fine. Um, then from that, you just figure out the pinout. Uh, I can actually solder directly onto pins. I generally don't do that because it's a pain because <laughs> you need to be way more accurate when doing that kind of soldering. So normally what I do is I actually trace the pin out to some nearby SMD components that are connected to the pin that I want to actually hook up to. And so in this case, it's that resistor and that capacitor over there. And that then, you know, connects that red wire to our potentiometer. Um, it's really hard to co coordinate your finger trying to look at what the camera is seeing. So that's why why I'm pointing all over the place. It's not because I'm that badly coordinated. It's I'm trying to look at what the camera is capturing. Anyway, um, and then over here, I mean, the memory, very simple, right? You can, you can see which pin that's like that. This uh, trimmed off cap leg right here, that's, that's all that's connecting the memory mod. Um, then for the 0.95 volts rail, which this rail might actually be the, oh, no, yeah, um, this rail down here might actually be useful for, uh, which actually I should probably center that better, oh, and it, yeah, so, um, that rail might be useful if you were going like sub zero because uh, definitely like 7970s and 7950s do this if uh, you're running very low temperatures the uh, core will actually lose display output if you don't raise this don't raise this voltage and it can also occasionally help with cold bugs so yeah but at ambient it doesn't do anything so that's kind of a shame then this is the memory vrm over here right the, these two big fat mosfets and and the inductor anyway and then for the memory controller rail we've just got this chip right here and you can see which pin that wire connects to as well yeah so that's that's the memory control uh memory controller voltage controller there <laughs> too many controllers in that so yeah that's that's it it's just like if you want to you know whack a bunch of core voltage into a 7770 well uh you're gonna want to mod the memory controller rail so you can so you don't lose a bunch of memory clock speed um so yeah, there. And it is worth adding capacitors to these. That, that's another thing that, yeah, you can definitely add extra capacitors and, and it'll help them with overclocking. It's not gonna make as much of a difference as raising the core voltage by 50 millivolts, but you know, if you reduce the undershoot um, by 20 millivolts, that's basically like raising the core voltage like by 20 millivolts. Like it'll give you roughly the same improvement in terms of overclocking because what causes a chip to crash is not your average voltage, it's your minimum voltage and if your minimum voltage, you know, so if you raise your core volt, if you raise your core voltage by 50 millivolts, then your average voltage goes up by 50 millivolts and your minimum goes up with it by roughly 50 millivolts. Um, but if you just make the difference between your average and your minimum smaller, then your overclocking headroom also goes up because your minimum voltage has gone up, but your thermals don't get worse because your average voltage hasn't changed. So it's kind of one of the, like if you have a GPU where, uh, you know, the, the stock capacitor configuration and power plane design is just not very good. Yeah, extra capacitors make a lead to a big improvement in terms of, uh, oh, well, not big, but they, they do give you a nice free bump in terms of maximum frequency. So, um, yeah, that's it for the video. That's the that's this 7770 here. And uh, yeah, the, the main thing is like, you just need to overvolt the memory controller and then these things uh, pick up some speed um, in terms of the memory. So 
that's neat. So I guess thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comment section below. And if you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, I have a Patreon where you can support me directly, which obviously is how, you know, I get my hands on cards like this. Um, because, uh, yeah, like, I've got poor self-control, so I walk by the CEX and I see, oh, they've got a 7770 and it's 25 quid. Well, I guess I'm buying that. Um, so... Yeah, uh, and what else was there? Oh, and then there's also the AHOC Teespring store where you can pick up shirts, stickers, posters, you know, the usual YouTuber merch stuff, and that also helps out with running the channel quite a lot. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's it for the video. So thanks for watching. Oh, and there's links to the Patreon and Teespring store down in the description. So, yeah, now that's actually it for the video. So thanks for watching and goodbye.